From sidewalks to speed humps to lights, those are some of the things that North Charleston's District 3 needs. And that's why Virginia Jameson, current city councilwoman, wants to run four more years to serve the residents of that district. I sit down exclusively with Virginia for a special edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and download my free Quentin's Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play Store. Virginia Jameson, welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you, Quentin, as always. It's a pleasure for the inclusion and for me being able to sit with you again. Oh, thank you greatly. I, I, I want to go back to the email you sent me, I believe, last year. And you, you basically posted this on your Facebook page as well. You said this too, quote, This page was created four years ago when I first ran for election to North Charleston City Council District 3. I have served, and I'm asking you to re-elect Virginia White Jameson on November, November 5th, 2019. What is the biggest difference between four years ago and right now when you think of Virginia Jameson, the city councilwoman? Well, back then I was just a public servant voicing concerns for a lot on a lot of issues. But now that I've served for four years, I realize so much more is needed. And you need that voice. You need somebody who's going to be consistent. You need somebody who's going to um, follow the rule of the law and also be informed attending meetings, um, reaching out to, to your constituents, and walking the walk. <laughs> How are, informed are you about your particular district right now? Well, I think, Clinton, that I have really, really, you know, gone behind the curtains, look at different issues of our district. I'm looking at the livability mode, which I'm we are a proponent of. I'm looking at all of the things that we need as citizens in North Charleston to, to have that quality of life. And that has to do with our infrastructure. That has to do with um, a part of that infrastructure, lighting, safety modalities for speed, you know, against speeding, uh, traffic control. And we do need that walking piece and that biking piece. You talk about that walking and biking piece. I was just interviewing Sam Hart just a few seconds ago, mm -hmm. and he talked to me about obviously bringing sidewalks into District 11. How many sidewalks do you need for District 3 right now? Well, Quinn, I'll start with the basics. Um, we have state roads and we have city roads, and then we have roads that are repaired by the county. Yeah. So what I would try to do is give some sidewalks and areas where we have children waiting on the side of the road for the school bus sure. in the morning. It really gravitated with me this morning as I walked certain areas campaigning that, you know, if a child is seven years old or eight years old and they're having to wait on that side of the road for the bus and there's no sidewalk with all of the new modalities, uh, air buds and all of that, yeah. that they're endangered. And so I want to talk to our state, SCDOT, I want to talk to our school district, and I want to talk to our city about shoring up some of these things for the safety of our children. And when you think of also safety in District 3, what else are you looking at from an infrastructure standpoint? The other thing that I'm looking at was we have a, a change in, 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 in attitudes. Um, there are people riding their bicycles more. People are walking more. So are these areas safe? Do we have that crosswalk or that bike crossing that they could get from one side of the street to the other safely? The other thing that I'm looking at is lighting. Lighting is so crucial to our communities. And Quentin, we still have those lights that are not very effective from the old days. So we need to upgrade those things. We need to upgrade our traffic signs. The 25 mile per hour really need to be there with a light that will allow those children, those bikers, those walkers, that degree of safety in our communities. And how much money is in the budget for that? Um, presently, um, I don't think that there's any, but we have been talking about infrastructure upgrade and that we should have a piece in our budget for it. So I'm very, very um, hopeful that I will be sitting at that table so that I can be that voice to say, we need to have that. 
and it, was, it shouldn't start um, tomorrow. It really needs to start today. 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 What is the quality of life of District 3? Well, like I said, we have roads that are owned by the states. We still have drainage ditches, not drain, you know, conduits. And so we have we have a lot of concerns, Courtney. And mostly, again, is the drainage ditches, the unsafe practices. We don't have like speed humps. We just added to a speed hump to district. <coughs> on the um, SCB or T side of the house um, with a lot of fight back, push back, and we can't do this and we can't do that. But we did add two speed humps in, um, just in, in, in the, the state side of the house on um, Shadow and then one other smaller street on Salamander Creek. Mm -hmm. So that was a plus for us. Um, we have been told that we will be getting eight more speed humps per districts. So I'm already working with my constituents to see where that need is. But everybody will say that we need it on our street. But again, we do that traffic analysis. We look at that traffic. We look at the speed before we make that decision. Decisions. You talk about those drainages. How many drainages just need to be drained? Well, the fortunate thing about um, uh, the new initiative that's headed up by Senator Sin, Sandy Sin, is that we are now starting to look at those things that will cause flooding in these communities. You know, it was always on I-26 or always on Rivers Avenue or on some of the other streets. But now we're starting to look at communities. Thank you, God. Thank you, Governor, for, you know, bringing this thing to fruition. We've been talking the other. So, this summer, SCDOT got out there and they cleaned practically every drain ditch. Thank you. <laughs> um, so right now we're good. We still maybe have a problem with a few others. I just went over on Timber Street, right. one of the SCDOT roads, um, and they t showed me what was going on over there. So of course I sent a note to SCDOT, my contact person telling me that, well, Thank you for all you've done, but we need these two areas cleaned out also. What other problems are there in that particular area with drainages? Well, what is happening, and again, this is cleaning the drain ditches is not an ongoing thing, a year-to-year okay. -year thing, okay? It seems like the drain ditches hadn't been cleaned in like 10 years or 8 years or the least amount of time is 5 years. So this debris, the grass and everything build up in these ditches. So now you've got water pooling on the road. So if we have like a downpour, like we haven't had for a month. It's coming tomorrow. Um, it's coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and we've not had that rain. So again, if we had that rain, we would have flooding on the roadway. Mm -hmm. So if you've got flooding on the roadway, of course, then you've got roads that are being, you know, eroded because of the water pooling there for long periods of time. So that is a paramount issue for us. Speeding. Speeding, again, in residential communities are just bedlam. I mean, it is almost catastrophic. One thing creates something else, creates something else. So people are trying to find a way to exit Rivers Avenue or 52. Right. So they're trying to find a way to exit Highway 78 because the traffic is bumper to bumper all day long, every day. Um, so they are cutting through the communities. So they are going somewhere, and it's not to visit someone in our communities. They are trying to get to the other side of town by way of the residential communities. So here we are, Bedlam. But hopefully when we place the, um, the eight new speed humps that we've been promised, maybe that's going to, you know, kind of cut down on some of the um, speeding. Um, hopefully if we start using some lights or something that would, uh, they could be solar lights that would kind of slow that traffic down, especially on those cut through areas. So there's a lot of work to be done. And um, I hope, I hope and I pray that we start focusing on the livability of our city. 
the livability, not for tourism, but for these residents who are aging in place, for our school children who are standing at bus stops without sidewalks in the dark. These are the things that I really want to focus on. I also want to focus on um, how funding is done for the different districts. How was funding done in your district, District 7? Excuse me, no, district, 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 district 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that is what I want to focus on. Okay. How is monies that are available distributed for neighborhood livability, okay? How do we decide what, well first I will tell you what is needed as a city council woman, sure. and I hope I will be that for the next four years, okay. um, but then I want to find out, do we have like a table that you know, we put everything on the table and then we put, uh, you know, make it a, a priority you know, which, which is most needed, which is next needed for second and third priority. And that's what I hope that we are working on. Um, heard that conversation from a few of us. And um, hopefully if, you know, we stay as a, a cohesive body, that we will be able to do these things in the city. Now, those speed humps and obviously, you know, the lights that you're looking for, how much does the North City of North Charleston have to fork out? How much taxpayers have to fork out for all of this? Well, believe it or not, Quentin, um, a speed hump and the sign that has to go with it that reduces that speed to 15 miles per hour. Right. Um, I was told that I did look at some of the figures that it costs about $5,000 per hump. So then I went a little bit further and there's a, um, a company that uses like green material. Right. And they're not in South Carolina, they're in another state. But then I'm looking at that as a, a, an alternative. If this material is less expensive and provide the same kinds of, 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 of needs, then why are we not looking at something different in today's society? Again, when we're trying to go green and we're trying to cut costs and all of those things. Well, then, how much would that save the city of North Charleston? Well, when I looked at co the comparison of $3,000 to $5,000 and whatever the overlay is, um, I felt that it would really be a cost effective. Instead of doing eight speed humps, we probably could do 12 speed humps, you know, just by reducing that cost for material. What is that overlay? What is the overlay? Yes, ma'am. Meaning? For the costs with the speed humps? I'm asking that question right now. Okay. Okay. Now, if you were to do it on your own, how much would that how much would that save the city of Tr North Charleston versus going with SC D O T that is? Well, Clint, I really have to do some more work on that. Okay. And I don't want to throw out a number sure. and not not be sure. um, that's sure. in the right ball sure. for But I do know that sometimes we are constrained because we are a city entity. So we have to use whatever is available to us. But sometimes we, and especially now, we need to start looking at other companies and looking at um, cost effective ways to do this you know, speed humps, lighting, whatever. Um, with Dominion being a new entity into sure. our city right. and our state, right. um, you know, and I'm, I know that they're giving out a lot of grants and, and um, assistance in those matters, so maybe we need to capitalize on that also. I know when I was sitting at your house earlier this year in January, it was cold, 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 but in dark that night, but you talked about obviously the issue with the noise coming from the interstate. How much noise has been generated from that area since that time we spoke? So Quentin, do you have a couple of years for me to tell you about 10 years of working on the noise um, reduction for our right. communities from the 52 connector going east and west right. to the 78 um, cut off? We're inundated. And it's so 
unbelievable but now that even SCDOT is saying those corridors are at 200% capacity for traffic. Everybody operates at 100% or even 75%, but we're operating at 200% capacity. So if last year when we were at 150 and now we're at 200, you can imagine what that noise level is. But I am so glad that I'm so persistent that I, I follow up on things and I and I make I make contacts relatively easy. You know, I'm not the I'm not the, the bulldog. I can be if I want to, but I'm not. <laughs> so I walk in and of course uh, this Miss Jameson, this is a custom woman, this and that. So I know, you know, I mean I like that because this is how we're supposed to be operating, not bulldogging. Um, so I have stayed in touch with Chairman Elliot Sunny. I have stayed in touch with Mr. Turner. I'm not going to call his first name, I'm just going to say Mr. Turner. I have stayed in touch with communicating with people. Um, I have a point of contact at um, the governor's office, Mr. Plow. He has really been very, um, very gracious in, in, in telling our concerns. Um, and our, our local, our, our state level local people, Kandava, uh, oh, yeah. Jay Moore, oh, yeah. and all of these guys, I'm, right. I'm really in their ears all the time. And so um, a representative Kandava said to me one night, oh, yeah, yes, a councilwoman, you know, you need to keep saying what you're saying because you are getting some traction. So just to fast forward, on yesterday, um, Charleston County, of course, has picked up the issue. Um, they are getting, they are trying to get more data so they can quantify what we need. Sure. And so, on yesterday, they selected, with, with my help, of course, they selected four sites within that within that corridor, and they placed these sensors for like 15 minutes just to get the noise level. They picked four o'clock and beyond, which was really a critical time of the day. So. Again, I want to be here for the fruition of the noise barrier. And I think it's going to come because now, I um, just read an article in Post and Corio, they got, um, the SCDOT is really looking at it. Not only is SCDOT looking at it, but the, fi the Federal Highway Administration is looking at it. So all of these people in, in, in this role now that had not been concerned um, over the last 10 years. What more concerns do you have about District 3? Well, I said this to someone and, um, and they kind of, you know, didn't agree with me, which was fine. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be obvious very soon. Quentin, we are becoming inundated with everything but a grocery store, a, a, another grocery store. People want choices, okay? We are inundated now with what we thought, I thought something that was workable. We have that express bus system where the buses would just be coming in the morning and the afternoon. Well, the one thing that really, really, really blew my mind was the fact that they added three more bus stops in a corridor, not on Rivers Avenue, but they're coming off of Rivers Avenue onto Green Ridge Road. Sure. And I was I was very, very, very disappointed on how it came about. Um, and then I went out and looked at the need for the additional stops. The one stop to keep that keep um, the bus riders from coming across rivers at those critical times of the day when the traffic is so heavy. Yes, I, 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 uh, I'm not agreeing with it, but I think there was a need for it. The other two bus stops kind of make us like a, the other three bus stops kind of make us like a Uber pickup station. You know what I'm saying? It did not, they're so close together. Um, they're in critical areas that was not evaluated. 
And I'll say this, Quinn. When I spoke with a Carter, when I asked them how did they qualify this or quantify it or whatever, well, I was very disappointed in their, in their discussion with me. Um, being had, Having sat on the Carter board at that period and not being informed by way of email or by having a meeting or asking me and some of the constituents, you know, to come to the table and discuss this so we could, everybody could be heard. I was very disappointed. Um, and I expressed that very loudly. Now, how many more evaluations do you want for that particular area as far as the express buses? Well, the express buses are doing fine. Um, we do, when that express bus leave the Antler, parking. It comes to Green Ridge Road. That area right there, Green Ridge and Antler, needs some traffic assessment. We've already had it, had an assessment done like two years ago. Okay. And they said it didn't qualify for any, you know, increase in, in, in safety factors. So what about now? What about now? And like I said, everything starts with the conversation. Um, we have to do more educating of the public, not just put some, throw, throw it at them and say, here, take this. And I think that's where a lot of the entities in our cities are getting so much pushback because we're not spending that time to sit down and speak with the people involved. Why should people give you four more years? Well, the first thing, Quentin, I think that I'm a considerate voice. I state the facts. Not only do I state the facts, I gather the facts. If, if there is a concern, I will go out and evaluate that concern like I did for the express bus. I sat on each en entry and exit to get my feedback and then I share it with um, other people that um, you know are involved and then we make a decision and then I give that information and I gave the information to Carter. Um, I have attended every meeting. I'm informed totally about what's going on in District 3. I'm informed on what's going on in our city. I read information, I follow through, I'm consistent, and I love the people in District 3. And service is my call. Is your voting record consistent? My voting record is that piece that I pride myself on. Because if you are a body of 11 people, We can't all see it through the same lenses, okay? And sometimes that descending vent is what really bring the clarity to, to an issue. Virginia Jameson, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quentin Schools House. Thank you, Quentin. And I look forward to serving District 3 for three more, four more years and serving my city. And I have enjoyed this, and I love it, and um, I hope that people go out and vote on um, November 5th. And um, I hope I get another interview as the newly elected city councilwoman in District 3. We'll see you in November. <laughs> <laughs>